Happy holidays, guys. Welcome to Movie Emporium's Christmas Review. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next. Of course, comment below on any video that you watch my channel. So it's Christmas. I hope you guys are enjoying it with your family or working or whatever you're doing. I hope you're eating good food, you know, opening a lot of presents. Uh, this is a good time of the year, a good time of the, you know, good day of the uh, year to talk about a movie that I really love. Um, it's not necessarily a Christmas movie, which, you know, I would talk about. But it's a movie that opened 20 years ago, and I consider a perfect comedy, as well as a kind of just a fun romp of you know action and sci-fi and so on and so forth. And that is, of course, is Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest, of course, is directed by Dean Parasol, who is actually directing Bill and Ted Face the Music. And it follows basically this group of kind of washed up actors who are reliving the days of their, you know, their TV show that they used to be on. And they've never gotten any more roles, anything of significance, and it's just basically their thing. You know, they go around making money off this, you know, kind of washed up TV show. And the problem is they're kind of bored. They're kind of just, you know, whatever. They don't really care. Then they're angry by their, you know, the guy who was the lead actor in the show because he's, you know, he's stubborn and he's kind of cocky and he thinks he's important even though he really isn't. And it becomes like an embattled, embittered problem that really kind of plays off throughout the whole movie. And this movie just has a great cast of characters. We have, you know, Tim Allen, who's playing J Jason Nesmith. We have uh, Scorny Weaver, who's playing Gwen DeMarco. We have uh, Alan Rickman, who is playing Alexander Dane, who, of course, is amazing in this movie. Uh, Tony Shalhoub is awesome as Fred Kwan. Uh, we have Daryl Mitchell, who's Tony, Tommy Weber, the, you know, the guy who controls the ship. Uh, we also have Sam Rockwell who plays Guy Fleegman, who is the guy that was on one episode, but still, you know, kind of runs around with the crew thinking he's important, even though he's not. And it's just a group of people that, you know, are just whatever. And one day they're at a convention center or a mall because this show is really not anything anymore. And Jason Nesmith is Tim Allen's character. He is like, he goes in, he's like excited. He's talking about the show and, you know, the show ended like on a cliff note or a cliffhanger, like in Toy Story 2, ironically, which came out the same year. And he goes to use the restroom and these kids are in there and they're making fun of him because he's like really into the show and kind of, they make him feel like a loser. And it starts to kind of snowball into just him kind of being self-doubting and getting drunk and so on and so forth. So basically one morning after Jason Nesbeth has gone on a, a bender, he uh, he wakes up to find a bunch of people staring at him through a window, which is really quite funny. And this is where we get uh, the Thermians characters. And they are just a group of weird oddball characters. You have no idea who they are. But they claim they have a ship. And this ship will is uh, basically based off the Galaxy Quest show. But they are being attacked by this character named Ceres. And he, they need his help to basically take down Ceres to kind of, you know, because of all the issues that they have. And so he's like, all right, it's a paid gig. I'll go for it. And he uh, goes with them. And he passes out and he wakes up on the ship. And, you know, he's like, oh, this is really cool. He's looking around. The set's awesome and so on and so forth. He meets a character played by Enrico Calatoni, who plays Mathazar, who is the standout of this movie outside like Alan Rickman and uh, Sam Rockwell. And he basically thinks everything's fake. So he like does everything he can to be over the top and, you know, whatever. He basically shoots at him and he wins and, you know, he goes on his way. He's like, I want to go back to earth because he thinks he's on earth or whatever and that's when the story kind of breaks wide open because he is transported through kind of this like really cool transport wormhole and he ends up back on earth and he realizes what happened was it was real this thing is real so he's gonna go tell all of his you know people he worked with on the show about it about how this is a real thing and he's doing everything he's gonna go and join the crew of the protector and of course, as things do, they doubt him. They're in the middle of a, a like an opening of a store and they're signing autographs and no one's there. So they're just like deflated and just bored. And he's like, oh my God, I got, you know, I got this thing that happened, you know, this real thing and then there's real aliens and real villains. And, you know, he can't convince them, but what happens is he goes off and they're like, oh, this must be a paid gig. So everybody goes with him and they end up uh, on the ship. 
and they realize that this is real and this is crazy and this is when all the great humor all the great fun all the great adventure there's very emotional moments in this movie and it's just you see all the characters in this movie just kind of develop into their own into the realization that this is a real problem that they are being modeled after because basically what the story is is about characters who are basically beloved by a group of people who need their help and really believe this situation that the actors were in was real and they had to do everything in their power to basically deal with the situation because Ceres is a real threat who is attacking these Thermians and you find out later on that they're basically been wiped out and there's only this few amount of people and it's kind of like a, a magic parlor trick to kind of show that there's more people than there really is but this movie has a lot of heart it has a lot of emotion you know, you watch and you sit and you watch these characters, especially a character played by Alan Rickman, you know, Alexander Dane, who's playing Dr. Lazarus. And he's so just not wanting to do this anymore, but he constantly wears the, the headpiece that he, throughout the movie, never takes it off. And he has like the most emotional character arc because some of the people, some of the Thermians really look up to him as the doctor. And when one of them dies, it really shows the kind of transition of Dr. Lazarus himself or uh, Alexander Dane, and he really kind of goes for it. And it's just, that is what's going on in this movie. You see the transformation of these characters who are washed up actors who end up becoming intergalactic heroes, and they do it because they are pushed and they are, you know, enticed and they are just kind of put in a situation that they never thought they would be in. And when they see all this happen, they don't know how to react to it. But there's such great moments in here between. You know, them sitting at a table, eating food, but there's the different foods of the different people, the different worlds based off the characters themselves. You know, there's a great sequence. They basically transport this planet because they need a beryllium sphere, which is kind of like a, a matter device, you know, that kind of transport, you know, keeps the ship moving. And there's a cool segment where, you know, Jason Nesmith and his, you know, people and Guy and stuff like that are basically faced off against this big rock monster, which is it's very reminiscent to Star Trek. And it's just, it's really cool. Those are the sequences, you know, the different, you know, the fact that, Ceres is very Star Trek-ish in his character moments and his character motivations. That's what this movie is doing, but it's doing really well, is it's doing a comedic version of Star Trek with characters who are actors, but are put into a situation of a real type of, you know, Star Trek The Next Generation. And there's just, it's, there's so much good stuff in this movie, you know? The fact that the, the Thermians have found these tapes or these, uh, what they call authentic files or whatever they're called, and they really believe it. They somehow created a ship piece by piece. Just is an amazing thing to watch. You know, like I said, Enrico Calitoni is fantastic as Mathazar because he really is hopeful. And he is a commander that doesn't have a lot of faith in himself, but he has to be shown to have faith in himself. And it's just his character moments are really kind of moving and very kind of emotional as the story plays along because you really feel for these characters that are being basically made fun of throughout the movie, you know, they, when they're first introduced on the spaceship, they're all like these weird, creepy looking creatures. And then they transport themselves into like normal looking people, but just the way they walk, the way they act, the way they talk, you know, Missy Pyle plays the, like the main female Thermian in this movie and she's fantastic. And she just does some really cool stuff. And she ends up being kind of the love interest for Tony Shalhoub, which is awesome. And Tony Shalhoub is also awesome in this movie because he's very like uh, very toned down and very just kind of, you know, doesn't really react to much but he's just he's the guy that's like scotty and he just kind of just reacts in kind of weird and interesting manners but he's just kind of toned down he's kind of like the coolest guy in this movie but it's just when you see these types of things you see the thermians and you see how they react you know rain wilson is one of the thermians in this movie he gets a small bit part and it's really fun to watch i just love them they're great antagonists they're great fun they're very you know kind of like a uh, Vulcans in a way where they're just kind of simple but they have a lot of depth to them and they have a lot of emotion and it comes out in various cool ways and when they finally are able to rise above the the Saris and the villain characters it's really a fun thing to see and like I said there's a very emotional scene between Dr. Lazarus or Alexander Dane and one of the Thermians and when you see you know how Alexander Dane reacts and how it impacted him that really shows you how well this movie is written and on top of that, you know, Scorny Weaver, who's playing Gwen DeMarco, is the sex object. You know, she's the one that, you know, a lot of young guys and reporters always look to, you know, up to her as like the, you know, sex thing or whatever. And she becomes more of a character that is more just 
an emotional resonance of a, a person that has a lot of emotional impact to the movie because she is, you know, she's attracted to Jason Nesbitt, but she's a very strong-willed person in this movie. And I love Sigourney Weaver. I think she's amazing in everything she does. So she's fantastic in this movie. And like I've already said about Alan Rickman, Daryl Mitchell, who plays Tommy, is that guy who's just like kind of like on the edge of every time. He's a guy who has to control the ship. And how do you control a ship that's real when you most of the time you were reacting to nothing on the screen? And it's just fun to see him react to trying like at the very beginning when they first move the ship out of dock. He like scra he like scrapes against the wall and now you can see everybody doing this. Like, uh oh. <laughs> it's just it's really fun to see and he really has his moments and so on and so forth. And then we have Sam Rockwell who's playing a uh, guy in this movie. And uh, Sam Rockwell, ever since, you know, he goes way back to like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This guy is just a presence on screen and on stage and whatever he does. It's really, really fun to watch him as the guy who is really cocksured and cocky at the beginning. But then he gets put into situations which freak him out. And they're some of the most classic moments of the last 20 years because it's just how he reacts to everything. Because he is that red shirt guy who died by some crazy thing in the original TV series. But to watch him kind of like react to real things and watch him like sweat and start crying and you know watch his smile sam rockwell is is outside of rico colatoni is the standout of this movie because he's so good and so ridiculous and so cocksured but he's just so much fun how he reacts to everything but that is this movie in a nutshell watching this movie play out it's one of the best sci-fi action comedies of all time for a reason it's so well written it's so well paced you know, Justin Long's in this movie. He's a lot of fun as like that nerdy kid that really helps him out. And just to watch the story pacing, the you know, the beat by beat, you know, going from people who don't believe to people, you know, saving the galaxy. It's a beautiful thing to watch. It has a great score. It's very well shot. And it makes me hopeful for Bill and Ted's face and music because I think Bill Dean Pariseau is a great director and great talent. You know, it's a shame that he hasn't got more work like on that level of Galaxy Quest, but... You know, if you go out on Galaxy Quest, it's a perfect note to even go out on. It's such, I miss Alan Rickman because he's such a fantastic actor. And, you know, when he was unsure with, you know, Die Hard, and now he's doing, like, stuff like Dogma, Galaxy Quest, I miss, I miss the guy wholly because he's such a fantastic presence in this movie, and you really feel everything for him. And, you know, it's not taken away from anybody else, but it's just a thing you miss with Alan Rickman. So, but yeah, Galaxy Quest with everything that is involved in this movie it's it's a perfect comedy it's a fun comedy and it just does a lot with this material and when you see how it plays out you see how it works it just fits perfectly and becomes a great time at the theater it, you know this movie gained a cult audience as because this movie was a failure in the theater and it just gained that cult audience later on and it's it's fantastic so if you haven't seen galaxy quest please do because I think you'll enjoy as much as everyone else has, and I have, so there you go. That is my Christmas review of Galaxy Quest. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, happy holidays you know, to anybody who celebrates a holiday of like Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Christmas. You know, Enjoy your holiday. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, join Movie Emporium, hit that notification bell at the top to find out what's coming next, and of course, comment below on any video that you watch my channel. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.